Divination. Divination, from Latin divinare to foresee, to be inspired by a god, related to divinus, divine, is the attempt to gain insight into a question or situation by way of an occultic, standardized process or ritual. Used in various forms throughout history, diviners ascertain their interpretations of how a queer and should proceed by reading signs, events, or omens, or through alleged contact with a supernatural agency. Divination can be seen as a systematic method with which to organize what appear to be disjointed, random facets of existence such that they provide insight into a problem at hand. If a distinction is to be made between divination and fortune-telling, divination has a more formal or ritualistic element and often contains a more social character, usually in a religious context, as seen in traditional African medicine. Fortune-telling, on the other hand, is a more everyday practice for personal purposes. Particular divination methods vary by culture and religion. Divination is dismissed by the scientific community and skeptics as being superstition. In the second century, Lucian devoted a witty essay to the career of a charlatan, Alexander the False Prophet, trained by one of those who advertise enchantments, miraculous incantations, charms for your love affairs, visitations for your enemies, disclosures of buried treasure, and successions to estates even though most Romans believed in prophetic dreams and charms. The Oracle of the Moon at the Siwa Oasis was made famous when Alexander the Great visited it after conquering Egypt from Persia in 332 BC. Both oracles and seers in ancient Greece practiced divination. Oracles were the conduits for the gods on earth, their prophecies were understood to be the will of the gods verbatim. Because of the high demand for oracle consultations and the oracle's limited work schedule, they were not the main source of divination for the ancient Greeks. That role fell to the seers, mu nu tau epsilon iota sigma in Greek. Seers were not in direct contact with the gods, instead, they were interpreters of signs provided by the gods. Seers used many methods to explicate the will of the gods including extispicy, bird signs, etc. They were more numerous than the oracles and did not keep a limited schedule, thus, they were highly valued by all Greeks not just those with the capacity to travel to Delphi or other such distant sites. The disadvantage to seers was that only direct yes or no questions could be answered. Oracles could answer more generalized questions, and seers often had to perform several sacrifices in order to get the most consistent answer. For example, if a general wanted to know if the omens were proper for him to advance on the enemy, he would ask his seer both that question and if it were better for him to remain on the defensive. If the seer gave consistent answers, the advice was considered valid. At battle, generals would frequently ask seers at both the campground, a process called the hyra, and at the battlefield, called the sphagia. The hyra entailed the seer slaughtering a sheep and examining its liver for answers regarding a more generic question, the sphagia involved killing a young female goat by slitting its throat and noting the animal's last movements and blood flow. The battlefield sacrifice only occurred when two armies prepared for battle against each other. Neither force would advance until the seer revealed appropriate omens. Because the seers had such power over influential individuals in ancient Greece, many were skeptical of the accuracy and honesty of the seers. The degree to which seers were honest depends entirely on the individual seers. Despite the doubt surrounding individual seers, the craft as a whole was well regarded and trusted by the Greeks. The divination method of casting lots, clarimancy, was used by the remaining eleven disciples of Jesus and to select a replacement for Judas Iscariot. Therefore, divination was arguably an accepted practice in the early church. However, divination became viewed as a pagan practice by Christian emperors during ancient Rome. In 692, the Quini Sex Council, also known as the Council in Trullo in the Eastern Orthodox Church, passed canons to eliminate pagan and divination practices. Fortune telling and other forms of divination were widespread through the Middle Ages. In the Constitution of 1572 and Public Regulations of 1661 of Ker Saxony, capital punishment was used on those predicting the future. Laws forbidding divination practice continue to this day. Smalland is famous for Askong a practice which occurred until the early 19th century in some parts of Smaland. Generally occurring on Christmas and New Year's Eve, it is a practice in which one would fast and keep themselves away from light in a room until midnight to then complete a set of complex events to interpret symbols encountered throughout the journey to foresee the coming year. Divination was a central component of ancient Mesoamerican religious life. Many Aztec gods, including central creator gods, 
were described as diviners and were closely associated with sorcery. Tezcatlipoca is the patron of sorcerers and practitioners of magic. His name means smoking mirror, a reference to a device used for divinatory scrying. In the Mayan Popol Vuh, the creator god Smikane and Spiacoc performed divinatory hand casting during the creation of people. Every civilization that developed in pre Columbian Mexico, from the Olmecs to the Aztecs, practiced divination in daily life, both public and private. Scrying through the use of reflective water surfaces, mirrors, or the casting of lots were among the most widespread forms of divinatory practice. Visions derived from hallucinogens were another important form of divination, and are still widely used among contemporary diviners of Mexico. Among the more common hallucinogenic plants used in divination are morning glory, jimson weed, and peyote. Buddhists in Asia divine by different methods. As seen previous to this section, many different cultures around the world use divination as a way of understanding the future. The most common act of divination in the Bawan village in Taiwan is called the Po. Bawan is not the actual name of the village, but for privacy purposes, that is what it will be called. The Po translated to English means moon boards. The Po consists of two wood or bamboo blocks cut into the shape of a crescent moon. The one edge is rounded while the other is flat, the two are mirror images. Both crescents are held out in one's palms and while kneeling, they are raised to the forehead level. Once in this position the blocks are dropped and the future can be understood depending on their landing. If both fall flat side up or both fall rounded side up, that can be taken as a failure of the deity to agree. If the blocks land one rounded and one flat, the deity agrees. Laughing Po is when rounded sides land down and they rock before coming to a standstill. Negative Po is seen when the flat sides fall downward and abruptly stop. This indicates anger. When there is a positive fall, is called sacred po, although the negative falls are not usually taken seriously. As the blocks are being dropped, the question is said in a murmur, and if the answer is yes, the blocks are dropped again. To make sure the answer is definitely a yes, the blocks must fall in the yes position three times in a row. A more serious type of divination is the kiowa. There is a small wooden chair, and around the sides of the chair are small pieces of wood that can move up and down in their sockets. This causes the clicking sounds when the chair is moved in any way. Two men hold this chair by its legs before an altar, during this incense are being burned, and the supernatural agent is asked to descend into the chair. It is seen that it is in the chair by an onset of motion. Eventually the chair crashes onto a table prepared with wood chips and burlap. The characters on the table are then traced and these are said to be written via the god who possessed the chair, these characters are then interpreted. In Japan, Divination methods include Fudomani from the Shinto tradition. Divination is one of the tenets of Sara religion. However, only those who have been initiated as Saltiques, the Sara high priests and priestesses, can divine the future. These are the hereditary rain priests whose role is both religious and medicinal. Specialized diviners called Abgega, Doctor of Agega Oracle, as well as Abaronmala, Doctor of Oramila Oracle. From the Edo people of West Africa for thousands shave use divination as a means of foretelling the past, present and future. These diviners are initiated and trained in Iha, divination, of either Amanigba nor Ormila, Beni nor Unmila. The Yoruba people of West Africa are internationally known for having developed the Ifa system, an intricate process of divination that is performed by an Awo, an initiated priest or priestess of Orunmala, the spirit of the Yoruba oracle. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.